In this video, I will talk about this paper called Spatial Temporal Graph Convolutional Networks or STGCN for skeleton based action recognition, which is the first graph convolutional based method proposed for action recognition. When we look at the skeleton sequence, surely we can represent them by graph, that each joint in our human body is a single node in our graph. And what about the structure of this graph? It's just based on the human topology. Like we always know that elbow is connected to wrist and shoulder. So we can consider these three joints as three separate nodes and the bones that connect these joints together can be considered as our edges in our graph. And each node initially is represented by a two-dimensional vector like xy or a three-dimensional vector xyz. And as you remember from graph convolution on your networks, we have a W weight that can map these two or three dimensional vectors into a higher dimension. And that's what they do initially and map these vectors into 64 dimensional vectors and then 128 and finally 256 dimensional vectors at the end layers of the network. But what is the network that they are using? Let's just talk about that. As others show in the paper, originally we have some input video and then we can use some post-estimation algorithm just to predict some 2D skeleton sequences or 3D skeleton sequences coming from these videos. And when we look at the middle representation of these skeleton sequences in this STGCN neural network, let's just see what happens. If I focus on a single joint and a single frame like this one, I can ask you this question, that what is the receptive field of this node? If you don't know what receptive field is, then I highly recommend watching the receptive field video, otherwise we can talk about it. So just to understand what is the receptive field of this node, we just need to look at the representation of the sequence in the previous layer. And we know from the graph convolutional networks what happens, right? We have this joint in the green, which is the same exact joint in the previous layer. And from GCN, we know that it receives some information from adjacent nodes. But what are the adjacent nodes? And this particular frame, we know that the adjacent node for elbow is rest and shoulder and graph convolutional neural networks passes some information from these nodes to the center node, which is the elbow. And of course, we have some self-loop just to preserve the order. So this should be the receptive field, right? But the answer is no. Why? Because they use GCN blocks, but on top of GCN, they use TCN, which stands for Temporal Convolutional Networks. So to understand better how this works, let's just look at the previous frame and the next frame. Well, in previous frame and next frame, for sure, we also have some elbows. And we know that, like before, they also receive some information from the wrist and the shoulder. So this is GCN. But what about TCN? Well, TCN has to model the temporal relationship from a single joint in different frames. So if I only focus on the elbow and take a look at them, and let's just assume that we have more than three frames, like nine frames, the way that TCN deals with that is that it defines some kernel. But unlike CNNs that we have two dimensional kernels, now we have a one dimensional kernel. And exactly like CNN, we define some window, like this three by three window, and we multiply the first one by A, the second one by B, and the third one by C, and then we sum all these things together and we place them at the center location for the output feature map. And what about the other locations? We just convolve this window over and over and we produce different sorts of outputs. But as you can see, the elbow information in first frame and the last frame is missing but we can kind of deal with that the same way that we did in CNNs by just adding some paddings in the first frame and the last frame. Now let's just look at the sequence in the first layer again. 
we pass some information from shoulder and wrist to the elbow but from the TCN we also pass some information from the elbow in previous frame and elbow in the next frame to the elbow at the center. So this red node in the middle layer that I mentioned has receptive field of all these nine joints. In other words, it contains the information of all these joints in the spatial temporal location. And likewise, if I go to the next layer, I can say this knee at this particular location has information of these knees and also these hips and these ankles. So as I go deeper and deeper in this neural network, I end up having some nodes that they are more aware of what's happening in their spatial temporal neighborhood of that sequence. And once I have this, I can just apply some global average pooling so as to reduce the dimensionality of that vector and apply some action classification on that output vector to recognize what sort of actions that we are having. Is it running or anything else? But of course, when we do average pooling on the whole temporal information, we kind of just remove the information between that which is another area of research that they come up with better things instead of just taking the average. But that's the main thing that you should know about this DGCN that I was interested to talk about this video. And finally, if you want to look at how it performs, we have the performance on two different data sets. On the left one, we are seeing how it behaves on N2 RGB plus D data set, which has 3D locations of some sequences that they are having 60 different actions. And this column is cross subject analysis. So in test data, we have different subjects compared to the training data. And this one is cross view analysis that the subjects are shared in training and testing, but they are in different camera viewpoints. Obviously, we can see that STGCN performs way better than LSTM counterpart, but currently, after five years, we are having more complicated methods that increase this number 81.5 to a value like 93%, and this 88% to a value around 97%. The other dataset is this one at right, Kinetics dataset, which they are having 400 different actions. And they are all gathered from YouTube videos, which seems much, much more challenging. As you can see, the top one accuracy is only 30%. And nowadays, after five years, it's only 40%. And yeah, that's all I wanted you to know about this one. In the next video, I will talk about HDGCN paper from ICCV 2023. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until the next video, goodbye.